Hello to the, what, 20 people that watch my videos. Um, so I'm going to talk about my dog, uh, Finnegan, who is my uh, trained psychiatric service dog. Um, but when I'm out and about in public and people ask me, I say medical alert dog because people assume if you say psychiatric service dog, they mistake it as you saying it's um, a uh, emotional support dog. And he's not an emotional support dog. He is a service dog. He um, performs tasks to help me with my disability. He you know, he's more than a companion. Uh, Finnegan is, um, and I will be, I'm going to do my best to get a video of him doing some tasks and showing some uh, pictures of him and um, the videos. I will do my best. Um, anyway, uh, he is a Shih Tzu mix. We're thinking Jack Russell, probably. And he is now seven years old. And um, I, it, I got him when he was three months old from the animal shelter when I was the manager there. Um, one of our dogs had passed away and we were ready for a new one. And he was three months old. He got bigger than we were expecting. He's a medium sized dog. He's like low and kind of long, but he looks nothing like a dachshund, but he's shaped a little bit like that. But Shih Tzus tend to have, they tend to be smaller purebreds and have a longer body. So it, it goes with the Shih Tzu um, appearance. Anyway, um, all my dogs um, go to obedience class, except for one I did him at home because he has, um, he is, well, I, I'm about to say um, reactive to other dogs, but he can be aggressive towards other dogs, but not all dogs. Um, they just have to be, I don't know, just some in little dogs, you know, he thinks are sweet toys. He's, uh, he's got a high prey drive and he's also very protective, not like in an aggressive way. And I'm talking about the wrong dog, but this is why I didn't choose him and why he didn't go. Um, and so I, I noticed um, over time, um, so Finnegan went to basic obedience and he learned everything so fast and he would get so bored. Um, with class and um, because he, well, I know how to do that. Let's do something else. And um, he, I you know, I noticed things that he can, you know, knew to, if a door, how to open doors and um, you can see the process in his head. He's a problem solver, and that is a trait you want. Um, he is not ideally suited. He probably should be a little more eager to please. He's got the Shih Tzu um, independence and... Uh, entitlement and 
blow you offness, but, um, and I mean, you have to, you, not just any dog can be a service dog. Um, and some dogs like the one I couldn't take, um, to class and, you know, we sometimes taking him for a walk is challenging because he, he barks at stuff and pulls, he's old now. So, um, some people just ha have dogs that, um, are in home service dogs. Uh, dogs that maybe are too timid out in public in new places, dogs that um, are too reactive. And what I mean by reactive is a dog that is triggered by something they see or hear or smell, and they sort of lunge in that direction, barking and pulling. And um, it, it doesn't, reactive does not mean necessarily aggressive um it's just that they lack a capability of impulse control and um and some of it is hardwired if you're talking about certain breeds um if you have a terrier it's difficult because they tend to have a high prey drive um you get a border collie, they're not good. Individual dogs might be suitable, but as a, as in general, you know, they have a hurting. So that's why people tend to pick the labs and golden retrievers because they like to please um, they're not, an independent dog likes to make its own decisions, um, and not necessarily look to you for instruction. Um, uh, so, uh, they're a little more placid, those breeds, but if you look at the individual dogs, and you have to be honest about your dog. I could have slapped a um, service dog vest, and, and I hate it when people do this, I could have slapped a service dog vest on him and walked around with him. He's well behaved. Um, and he's got solid obedience um, in public. In fact, he's he's an angel in public, and we get home and take his best off, and he's a stinker. He knows when he's working, and he behaves very differently with that best on than he does when we take it off and we come home. He's that smart. Um, and, uh, so you have to be honest about your dog. If your dog is, um, not trained in basic obedience, and that means they stay by your side, they, they have to know at a bare minimum, sit down stay the stay has to be that they stay even when you're not visible um and for a certain distance i know for the canine good citizens it's 20 feet um and heel is extremely important Dog knows how to walk right by your side, doesn't meander <laughs> around. Um, and probably the most important thing your dog needs to know is leave it um, and watch me. Uh, 
for when you know when a uh, distraction is coming, something you know your dog gets distracted by. With Finnegan, it uh, smells on the grocery floor. We've gotten over really well with little pieces of dog food on the floor in the dog food aisle, but sometimes there's, I can sometimes I can't even see it, but somebody has spilled something on the floor, and I don't know, but he has he he'll be doing his thing, walking along, and then I'm like, and I look back, and his nose will be. Um, so we are, um, we are still perfecting, leave it sometimes. Now, if I, if I see it, just something that he's distracted by, um, and distracted is not reactive. Distracted is just some that he'll turn his head and pay more attention to it than me and what we're doing. Distracted like if somebody walks by with another dog, that's one we've been working on. Um, he doesn't like lunge or anything like that. He just sort of <laughs> drifts in a certain direction. Like, um, they're not supposed to do that. Um, we are working on those two things. Um, but for the most part, he's perfection in public um this has taken a well a lot of work basic obedience you can't go anywhere until you have the basic obedience down um and usually um and not too young and not too old uh if you older if they're healthy you might be able to get by but if you need anything like help getting up or anything you need a younger dog but not a puppy i think two is a good age um and this is this is progress you're gonna have to make over if not months a couple years um and i noticed how smart he was by playing games with him and just well what happened was there was a obedience or there was a little con little contest um at the animal shelter and people brought their dogs and they had a it is just like an amateur fun thing and they had a thing where they your dog would do certain tricks like shake and speak and i realized that i had taught finnegan um all of the the obedience commands that he knew um, and no tricks. He didn't know shake, <laughs> nothing. So, or speak or anything like that. And so we went to work on teaching tricks and later in um, training for service dog work, the tricks actually played a part. Um, your dog cannot be yappy. Your dog cannot bark. In public buildings, they have to be quiet. They have to stay by your side. They have to pay attention to you. Um, so you, and it's wrong to just get a vest and put it on your dog. A lot of places allow emotional support dogs, but like most stores do not. Some, if you live in a small town, if the dog just behaves itself, they won't say anything. Um, but if your dog's barking and pulling and 
distracting. Um, what you're doing, if you do that, is you're putting people who have a legitimate service dog, you're putting their dogs not just in jeopardy, like your dog's aggressive or something, but it's a distraction. And their dog is there to um, pay attention to the needs of their, who they're working with, their team, your team. By the way, Finnegan for years um, was the, we had classes twice a year at the animal shelter and I was one of the instructors and Finnegan was the demonstration dog. He would show them how it was done and people were like, well, how long is it going to take my dog to be like that? And, um, and I'm like, when he gets home, <laughs> he, he barks at the mailman, he barks at the neighbor in the backyard, he does dog stuff, but as soon as he, anyway, I, I'm getting distracted. I don't have it. I didn't make an outline, so, um, so don't, I would say don't do that. In the same breath, I will tell you that my brother who passed away um, a couple years ago, he was a Marine. He'd been a, he was a Marine. He was in Somalia. He had PTSD. He had social anxiety. He had agoraphobia. They also said he had manic depression, I mean, bipolar disorder, um, too. But I wasn't real sure of that because much of the time his mood was altered with abuse of medications and alcohol. It was hard to know how much was. And um, he had sustained brain damage from chronic alcoholism. It was hard to distinguish between all of that and mood shifts. But he even, I don't know. Anyway, here's the thing. He lived in Ohio, away from stable family members. He stayed with everybody and had been kicked out for the person, other person's mental health. He, he was so just gone, just so the police, he stayed with us for a few months and the police were here constantly. Um, so he was in Ohio where he had a, a good, easy, easy access to medical and mental health VA. Um, so, and he, they helped him get an apartment, you know, a little, I forgot what they're called, but, um, little apartment. Um, but he had no people, no friends uh, that he couldn't have maintained a friendship anyway. Um, Nobody lived there, either they were in Missouri um, or Michigan, if they're in. Um, I mean, there was a couple other family members by him, but they were unreliable and were not going to be of any help to him. And they weren't in the same city anyway. He was alone. And he had panic attacks, and I'd seen them. And they were like, he had a lot of panic attacks, um, bad. Um, so he couldn't, he had to, he couldn't go to the store, he told me, because he got on the, it was too far to walk. 
or it was too cold. And he tried to get on the bus, but he got afraid he would get lost and panicked and got off. And so he was eating food and he, you know, he just wasn't able to access a lot of stuff and um, he was lonely and he wanted a service dog. And I was in the process of watching the dogs that came through at my shelter to get him the appropriate, an appropriate dog um, that would pass. So I know I just told you not to do this. Um, and so, and then one day I talked to him and he has a dog from the family members that I said weren't reliable. He got a dog from them. Sweet dog, but fear issues. Not service dog material, but in order for him to leave that apartment, he needed that dog. And he needed that dog to be able to go I um, all the way from where I lived in a whole nother state. You know, I would order, I never gave him money. I would order him lifts, deliver groceries, whatever, but um, he can take his dog in the lift. Uh, and uh, so he could take it to the um, dog park and take it to the store and things like that. But he, um, it, he didn't have the dog very long. He died walking the dog one night um, outside. Um, and I don't know how long he was out there, but the dog stayed with him and was on the scene when police came. Uh, so if anything, the dog was loyal. Um, but I did purchase surface dog stuff to give to him um, because it was at that point a life-saving life-giving act. So I'm going to go back to you and say, don't do that. Um, now, I had thought on Finnegan becoming a service dog, but at the time I was working. And um, But I don't know when or how, but I got this, um, anyway, I resigned from the animal shelter and um, started training him. I had started training them before because I had a vibe about the shelter and something was telling me that I would have some time to train him. So I got started and, uh, and oh, now I remember. The first thing I trained him was something was an experiment and it was something I just wanted to see if it would work. I totally f see that's what ECT did to me. I completely forgot a whole big portion of the story. Okay, so I love scary movies, but I don't like being afraid braid in my own home and I don't like the basement. I don't like the open stairs to the basement. I don't like the dark hallways we have here in the house. 
Um, especially at night, it's an old house and you turn corners into dark rooms and the light switch is way over there. And I thought, you know, I would like go down into the basement to load the washer or whatever, and then go running up with a basket of clothes and almost falling down. I don't know how many times. And so I thought, well, if I just had some company down there, um, I would feel better. And so it all started with me seeing if Finnegan would just go down the stairs into the dark. And his favorite treat was a banana chip because he has food allergies, which are, he has to eat special food. He can't eat any meat, any um, animal protein. So banana chips, carrots and what else he eats, anything, but um, tossed one down the stairs and he went down and got it. So there's this hole, there's right there's the washer and dryer and way in the back, there's just room for storage, but it's dark. And there's a creepy room back there with a creepy door. It's just old house creepiness. And um, I threw him a banana chip over in that dark and I'm like, he can go check that out. And what ended up happening is that now, anytime he sees somebody with a clothes basket, he goes to the basement, you open the door, he goes down. Um, and while you are messing with the laundry, he goes to the back and I think he's just hunting for more, see if there's any more treats back there that have been thrown. But he stays behind me and that's the point. And then I go up the stairs first. So I don't have that feeling that something is behind me going up the stairs and we're gonna reach my legs. So he goes up behind me and I taught him to do that by treating him with the banana chip. I'm going up and I hold it behind me for him to take. So he knows he gets a treat if he goes up behind me. If he goes up ahead of me, he didn't get a treat. So he figured that out very quickly. And so I don't have, I, Ever since he's learned that, I've not had that fear of the dark in the, uh, some of it just like, it just evolves. Um, going to the bathroom at night and stuff, he goes ahead and I say, I point to wherever I want him to go and I say, you go. And that means go ahead of me, not beside me and he will go to, he'll stop at a door and look back at me to see if that's the next place to go. Um, and I say, you know, go ahead. And the doors, yes, as long as somebody's not in there, the doors are left. I have designed them so that they don't shut all the way and he can nudge it open himself. So, um, so he's always, if you know, at night walking around the house, he's always ahead of me. <clears throat> um, so it went from there to, let's say I stopped working at the shelter and we started focusing on getting the CGC. This is your first, your first aim is finishing um, obedience class. If you don't have a class, um, you can probably just look online on YouTube and find videos, but it has to be positive training that negative, jerking with the choke chain that's way outdated. 
Um, even though that's how my dogs were learned, taught, um, they did fine, but it's less frustrating for the dog and the owner. So just look for the word positive. Reward. Uh, it can be toy, treat, whatever. So then is the CGC. And that is something that um, comes from the AKC. And it basically says that your dog has been tested um, and proven to be safe in public. And Finnegan has his CGC. Um, and we had to, I had to work with him a lot on the dog part because um, he had a bad experience with an English bulldog, um, tried to attack him, and I'm not entirely sure if he is uncomfortable with the way some dogs approach him or if he's protect, trying to protect me, but he used to, if they came like face on, you know, rather than maybe sniffing butts, he would do a little at them. And so that started after the encounter. It was a very scary encounter. That dog was after him. I mean, that dog was gonna eat him. And I was like holding him in the air and the dog was trying to get him and he was just shaking. So it was traumatic. And so we had to work through the dog part. I had to practice at home with our dogs that he knew and treat him and treat him and treat him. When he, you know, my mom would walk up, we'd walk up and treat, treat, treat. Just so he started to get in his head that other dogs mean treats. He doesn't have to, they don't have to go and meet in the test. They just have to like pause and then keep talk to someone for a few minutes and then keep going. The dogs don't have to interact. Um, they're supposed to just, you know, not be aggressive. Um, people before I trained him. People had assumed Finnegan was my service dog when we would I would take him to the Renaissance Festival. He would place himself between me and some other people and just sit there and be there. <laughs> so it would and I didn't know why, but he, uh, and so the next step is, oh, I always forget the letters, public access um, evaluation. And that is a, like a little more involved. The CGC, you can go to the AKC website and it tells you what your dog needs to be able to do to get that and um and they have evaluators listed i am a vet an evaluator but i let it expire because i didn't really use it um, and my vet's an evaluator so she did fins the public access is a more um and I think people can do it by sending in video. Um, but it's how the dog goes into a building, what they're like in the building, leaving the building, going on an elevator, stairs, excuse me. Um, just all the things you would encounter in public. Um, and this is getting more towards the service dog. Uh, title. And um, so 
So right now I'm having some trouble because of COVID. Finnegan goes to the grocery store without any problems. Um, the pharmacy, all the stores, the pharmacies, um, and library, post office. Um, I live in a very small town and, um, and because of COVID, like a lot of restaurants aren't open and, um, there, I, I need to find an elevator for him and I need to find a restaurant for him because, um, he's not ready for this yet. Um, this is something is the, like the one last thing he's working on. Um, <clears throat> he has it like down about 90%. Um, in a restaurant under a table, they have to lay under the table, just be somewhere out of the way, under the table, under the seat, and not jump after left like things, food that has fallen. Food that has fallen is his weakness. He'll stay in place, um, but if he sees food, he will reach for it. Um, and that's where leave it comes in. We're working on that now. Um, I've, I had one man, this is only gonna happen once because I was so angry at this guy. He, he must've known something about service dogs because he asked the right questions. The only, first of all, let me throw this in. There's no certification test out for service dogs that you have a piece of paper that you can prove your dog's a service dog. There's no such thing. Um, your dog needs to be able to um, <clears throat> I think it's two, do two tasks that are related to your condition, your um, disability uh, that helps you with your disability that you could not do otherwise um, for yourself and behave in public to a uh, higher standard than just another dog walking down the street. So, um, and so th those tasks need to be able to be reproduced at any time, anywhere. So there's they can't ask you what your disability is. That's off limits. No, you know, whether it's the store manager or a customer, um, they can ask um, what tasks the dog does for your disability um, and that you are in fact disabled. And I had this guy tried to pull one over on me and he's like, oh, is he just beginning? And I said, no, he's almost done. This is when he was still officially in training. Um, and I'm like, no, he's almost done. And he's like, well, what, I think he has what kind of dog or what does he, perform or whatever. And he's, and I went to, and I said, well, um, and he reminds me to take my medication and, um, you know, alerts me when I'm getting, and he starts saying, oh, so for anxiety and what he was going to do is he was going to go to, 
you don't have a service dog, you have an emotional support dog and it shouldn't be in here. Um, the emotional support dogs do not have public access, but service dogs do, and there are such things as psychiatric service dogs. And so things, the things that my dog in particular does is um, he First of all, he, um, besides the going around in the dark rooms <laughs> and relieving a lot of anxiety, he, um, I have an alarm that he recognizes. It's a very loud alarm, even though I hear it. Sometimes I have headphones on though, and I'm watching YouTube or or I don't hear it, sometimes I just space out. And um, I take the medication at four, I mean, two, two and 10.30. And so when he hears that alarm, wherever he is in the house, if he's not with me, he comes and finds me and one of our other dogs has picked up on this so they now actually both usually show up but he comes and finds me he comes and gets me and he paws and barks if I don't respond he'll bark especially if I have headphones on and then I'll know that there's something going on I'm supposed to do and, and I stand up and he'll go to where the medicine inks that's also where the treats are and um and he goes there make sure I, he looks over to make sure i'm still coming and i'm like oh, okay medicine so i have been able to take my medication remember it and take it at the same time every day and it has made a really big impact on my mood so without him i forget it that especially that two o'clock one or i lose track of time sometimes i i used to give them the treat um before i took the pill but what i found is sometimes i would give them the treat and walk away so the rule is you take the pill before the, giving the treat. Um, so there's that. And then the other thing is, um, well, there's two things. When I become irritable and I'm starting to work up agitation, I'm going to start having outbursts and stuff before it gets that bad. I will put my head in my hand, start shaking my leg, and just be like this, and have my head down. And that is an indicator to him that I he needs to get my attention so I can become aware of what I'm doing and that something is happening. And um, crying. He also does the, gets my attention and um, so I can become aware of that, you know, and like, act, like counteract whatever's going on. Because sometimes it's hard because you're stuck in here and you need something out here to get your attention and even if it's just to get your attention and and you can think okay something's wrong with me I need to go for a walk or something I need a break um, or to comfort you um, and that's the next thing he's working on. Um, 
he's is uh there's something called deep pressure therapy all that is is they the dog gets on your chest area your upper torso area and lays down and it's like um there's something in the nervous system about the pressure that is soothing um it's they use it for cows you know when the cattle in the squeeze box or whatever they um people with i know anxiety and autism have special shorts that put some squeeze in a little bit we use thunder shirts on animals that are afraid of storms or have separation anxiety a lot of vets and shelters and um and uh so that's kind of it's the same thing except they provide it for you like a follow-up with the after the getting your attention from your state of mind and um finnegan does the alerting um and we're learning the deep pressure therapy now um it's easier for me because i've been training dogs for a long time and i know how to read a dog and like they're not getting it this is why they're get, getting it wrong and maybe we should try this or and um and some things just aren't gonna work <laughs> um I mean, I don't know, maybe if I tried harder, I, he was helping me wake up, but it wasn't really a good time for me to wake up anyway. I don't know, it, that was a big mess. But I think my point is, you have to look at yourself and your needs and what that dog is capable of helping you with in a way they can help you um because um let's see i'm not quite sure how to express what i'm trying to say no no to like i can't go get somebody else's service dog and have it work for me like it definitely is teamwork and it's not going to suit my needs. Um, I am not for, I mean, unless, unless a person is truly unable to train their own dog, I'm not for getting a dog somewhere that's been trained or, um, so I've heard horror stories or I would um or um or have someone train your dog and send it back because that dog has not done all that work with you I think it's much better for you to have a dog and you get assistance on how to work with it at home and get in review with a trainer or something, but that you do the work. And they have, there are both things, like you go weekly or monthly or something. And anyway, I just did mine because I know I
I'd watched some videos, not of training, but of service dogs, so I knew what not to do. <laughs> and I vowed not to be um oh this is gonna be horrible to upload so long um arrogant some people are so arrogant when they get a service dog you know and 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 act like any other dog service dog or is beneath them and we're not like that uh okay so the other thing uh last thing i'm going to say is when you see a dog a service dog please don't coo or call or fawn or touch the dog because you're distracting the dog especially if they're in training because they're trying really hard to learn and some people don't know that and they they coo at Finnegan and most of the time he's good about it but sometimes with kids he has a hard time I can see him just wanting to go over there because he used to be able to get petted by children all the time and now he's not supposed to and he knows he's not supposed to and he knows why so um teach your kids too so that's all i'm gonna say about finnegan um and i'll try to get some video i'll do it separate like in a different video um and of him doing some of his stuff um i can't always like plan for it to happen so it just happens so um i'll try to replicate some things you might see some of my house so don't complain about my house it's not messy but i don't know it's Okay, so that's it. Let me know if you have any questions.